Hey, hey, friends. It's your girl, Melissa, and we are doing a podcast episode like never before. Um, I've been wanting to make this for two weeks now, at least, and I just haven't been able to sit still long enough or well that and I haven't wanted to completely process my emotions I've been I've been on a jerk excuse me a journey so to speak and so um we're just gonna have a little talk this is um I'm currently live on Facebook and this will be an episode on the podcast and it's not going to be edited so um you're you're I'm just uploading this basically is what I'm saying and so it's not fancy I'm not sending it to my podcast editor I'm not doing any of those things because um uh, I just want to get this uploaded okay so where have I been why have I been quiet why is there no activity in this group what's God been doing I'm going to answer all of those questions right so uh I'm Melissa Bat, Christian life and business coach and in February I had to make the decision to do things a little differently um I normally work from home and I really do not like leaving my comfort zone and I left my comfort zone in a huge way so huge and went to Indiana to help take care of my grandma so my grandma um, <clears throat> was on hospice like it, I think in December um, they had kind of told her cancer was back and um, she either was going to get treatment or not and she chose not to uh so hospice was called in all of that stuff i'm not gonna bore you with all the details but i want you to know some of the like i don't know i don't know you just just hang with me okay just hang with me um so i am not naturally a caregiver like Nobody would put me in the word caregiver. Typically, like, we don't go together. I am not who you call when you just come home from the hospital and need help. I will door dash you some food and have it sent to your house. And if you're local and I can, I'll stop over and, and check on you and tell you some jokes. That's what I'm typically known for doing. But God... And so let's talk about it. Um, let's start with the fact that I have been praying for probably about six months for God to help me be more gentle. Um, gentleness is not a strength of mine. And, you know, the Bible, his word says that gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. And as a believer... We aren't just supposed to have one fruit, but we we should see all of those in our life. And so I saw gentleness and was like, that I'm like, I'm very weak in that area. So I had kind of done a basically an audit of the fruits of the spirit. Like, how am I here? How am I here? You know, all the things. And so I've been praying for about six months for God to help me be more gentle because it's not natural for me. And boy, did he do it. <laughs> so my sister had called me um, really upset and basically knowing that she needed to go help my grandma and I wanted to be there for my sister and I wanted to be there for my grandma too. But I couldn't allow my brain to go like the thought of like being a caregiver for my grandma was not part of my plan um, because that's not something that comes natural. It's way out of my comfort zone. And so um, I was really just going to help with my nephew and then to see, you know, spend time with my grandma every day, you know, that kind of thing. Um, well, I knew 
Have you ever felt like God is doing something and it's going to be so outside of your comfort zone that you want to like not do it? You want to like hide and be like, no, I'm not doing it. That's how I felt. And this is going to sound so silly to some of you, but if you get it, you get it. One of my biggest fears and the things that was making me so uncomfortable was the thought of putting lotion on my grandma. I know. If you think it's weird, I get it. I don't, I was like, why is this such a big deal for me? Why does the thought of putting lotion on my grandma, like, make me so uncomfortable? And it was. Like, I, you all know, um, if you followed me for any time at all, um, I have a, like, I don't like driving. And I definitely don't like driving on the interstate. But, but my fear of putting lotion on my grandma was more uncomfortable and causing more anxiety than driving on the interstate. So weird. And I'm like, why is this? Like, this is so weird. Um, but I recognized it and I knew that this is something God was going to have me do. I hadn't quite understood the parallels between my prayer for gentleness and the act of putting lotion on someone who is dying. And so I did it. I like just trusted God. I'm like, ask my people to pray for me. And I knew I was going to do this. And so I went to Indiana and very quickly realized that it was going to take two of us on a regular basis to help my grandma. And, um, I did the lotion thing, first of all. Um, and I just like, how cool is it that God used this fear um, because, you know, I can't really explain it, except for me, putting lotion on someone is a very intimate thing. Like when my kids were babies, I would put lotion on them. Um, that I was 100% comfortable with. But the act of putting lotion on an adult just seems super intimate. And if you've been following me for any amount of time, you might know that I have recently discovered that there was some things that happened in my childhood um, that probably is related to this fear of like intimacy and that gentleness. Like I definitely have some walls up in that area. And so, um, but I knew I was going to do it because God was going to use it. And I knew that was what she needed. And it was a way that I could show up and serve. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to put lotion on her. And I did it, even though it made me uncomfortable. And I'm not talking about like, you know, her being naked and me doing it. Um, like I'm not like moisturizing her nipples, that kind of thing. Like some of you might be like, is that what she's talking about? Because this seems so weird. No, I'm talking about like putting lotion on her feet, her legs, her arms, um, you know, her, her like chest area or whatever, not like, like she's clothed when I was putting lotion on her. And I planned on doing that. Like I wasn't planning on going to that extreme and some of you guys are probably laughing because you're like you didn't really need to tell us all that but just hang with me so anyways I did it and just really prayed and asked God and like God I know this is something you want me to do and it's a way that I can show up because at that time I was like I'm not gonna wipe her butt and I'm not gonna be able to suction her she has a she had a trach and um it like she had to be suctioned a lot like at the end probably every hour um and so I knew I wasn't gonna be able to show up in those ways so I was like the least I can do is put lotion on her okay so um I did it and I want to tell you, sometimes the thing that we're afraid of the most is the thing that is going to set us free. Um, and while I wouldn't say that I'm at 100% in the gentleness category, what I was able to do with my grandma 
It's such a gift. I didn't just put lotion on her once a day or once a week while I was there. I moisturized that woman and showed her love multiple times a day like if I felt a you know a dry patch I'm like oh time for some moisturizer and so um the joke was that when she passed she was so moisturized that they wouldn't even need to roll her out she just slide on out um okay so there's that um the other thing, and this isn't exactly where I wanted to go, but I think there's just so much power in this. Like the thing that makes us uncomfortable, but we know God is in it. When we lean into that, like it does, it changes us for the good. And, um, I'm a better person because of it. And after I did it the first time, I no longer had that fear. Um, I was set free of that. And that right there alone is a word for somebody. The thing that you are resisting that makes you uncomfortable, you know, and it lines up with God's word. I'm not saying, you know, uh, you know, go cheat on your husband or something like that. I'm not talking about that. Like there was nothing in putting lotion on my grandma that, um, should have caused fear and it wasn't something that like it, it very much lined up with scripture and I knew that it was from God and not like the enemy trying to get me to do something I shouldn't do so use use common sense some discernment in this but when you lean into that and you do it it totally sets you free the other thing I want to tell you is that um not only okay i gotta i'm gonna full circle this okay this fear that i had of putting lotion on my grandma i ended up doing it multiple times a day like i said and um the moment that she died how cool is god guess what i was doing i was putting lotion on my grandma and it's just a God thing that he would allow me to be there in that way. And for my grandma to leave her earthly body feeling loved and cherished and worthy because at the end of the day like I think that putting lotion on someone you know it's it is it doesn't have to be intimate you know like I could slap it on her and be like here you go no but it wasn't that it reminds me of um the woman who washed Jesus's feet um, when Jesus, you know, like it was a loving thing and it was just a, a super sweet, amazing experience that I would have never volunteered for, never would have volunteered for because it made me so uncomfortable. Um, but when she died, that's what I was doing. And I think that is just like so cool for God to give me that experience. And I wanted to share that with you. That's just a piece of it. Um, but I think that is a word for someone to just lean in and love. Um, my grandma and I haven't always been super close. Um, I loved my grandma and like I made sure like I mean I always would take her to the grocery store or shopping because she loved to shop I um every time I came to town I would try to take her and get a pedicure so like I did those kind of things but I 
I was not, oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. I was not the like most loved, cherished of the grandchildren. You know what I'm saying? Like there was one that she favored more and um, that's okay because I think in her eyes, that kid needed it more than I needed it because I was getting it from other places maybe. I don't know. I don't wanna, I don't, I don't know. But she had her reasons and I, I was always okay with that. But I'm saying this because putting lotion on her and showing up for her in this way wasn't something like, I remember the first time I made an intentional decision to hug my grandma. I remember when I made the intentional decision to tell my grandma that I love her. Those were intentional decisions as an adult because that wasn't something that happened regularly. Um, and I'm not a physical touch person. I'm not a hugger um, or I wasn't. And she wasn't either. Like I, I, there's a lot of things that, um, we had in common and it was really cool to see all of that and be reminded of that as I was spending time with her. Um, at the end, she loved jewelry. She loved makeup, self tanner, shopping. Um, and she was the strongest woman I have ever met. Up until December, I had never seen my grandma cry. And she has had a lot of health issues. She's been on oxygen for, she was probably on oxygen for 21 years. Um, two years ago, she had uh, her voice box and all of that removed because there was cancer there. And so she hasn't been able to speak like I'm speaking, but she always like, I learned to read lips and I swear sometimes you could even hear a whisper. Um, but she's just very strong. Never complained. Uh, she'd tell you what she thought of people, but she never complained about herself or her situation. And I spoke at her funeral and I want to share a couple things that I said in the funeral that I, I think will connect with you guys and serve you well. Because again, my intention is always to bring value and help you apply this kind of stuff to your own life, right? And so um, at the funeral, I talked about um, number one, uh, this is the, th this was the third funeral that I have attended in the last 90 days. One of them was a suicide and, uh, one of them was unexpected, but not a huge surprise because there was a lot of health concerns. And then my grandma, my grandma was the only one that she knew she was dying. And because of that, I think we had time to, like, it was just a sweet gift for God to give us. Not everyone gets that chance, right? And so we were able to, I was able to have the conversations with her that I normally would put off, you know? you take for granted or you just assume things and it made me really have to lean in to that uncomfortable situation even more and ask hard questions and talk about the things that are normally the things that are unsaid because we just don't talk about that and so with that um I was able to have a conversation with her. Rylan, my 14 year old, had kept asking me, is grandma saved? Is she saved? Does she know Jesus? Like she's dying, like is she saved? You know, like he kept asking me that over and over and over. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure she is. That's what I would say, but I'm gonna ask. 
And I tried for months to ask her and I don't know why it's so hard to ask those questions to those who are the closest to us, but it is hard. And so I, you know, two or three different times, like I, I didn't come out and ask like exactly that. Like, do you know where you're going when you die? Like, I didn't ask that question specifically. I asked other questions. I'm like, so how do you feel? Um, because, you know, you now know you are dying. You're coming to the end of your life sooner than later. And um, in that, like, that was my way of saying, like, just kind of trying to figure out the answer without asking that specific question because that specific question was so hard for me to ask. Um, and, you know, she was like, I'm okay. When it's my time to go, it's time to go, you know? And that really was her philosophy on everything. Like, it is what it is, and we're just doing it, you know? There's no sense in complaining about it or whining about it or anything because I just got to do it. And so... Um, I had asked her that question and that's what she said. And I was like, okay, well, I think that means she's saved, right? But it, I didn't know 100%. And so there was another time that I was over there and I asked a question and um, she had told me that, her and my aunt had told me that uh, she watches uh, Joel, Joel Osteen every Sunday. Now, I'm not, like, a huge fan of Joel Osteen, Austin, Osteen, I think. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of his, um, but I was like, surely that means that she saved because surely he, he does some kind of, like, you know, if you don't know Jesus, you need to know Jesus, pray with me this prayer, something, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, so I was like, Okay, I, I wrestled with God and like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, she's good. And I talked about this in the funeral um, when I spoke, but she, <laughs> I learned as a kid, as a teenager especially, um, never to assume because assuming, this is what my mom taught me after lots of being grounded for assuming it was gonna be okay when it wasn't, is that it's you making an ASS out of you and me. That is the definition of assume. And so I heard that over and over and over in my head and was like, I can't assume. I've got, I've got to ask. And so um, because I could, like, there was time and we knew I couldn't hold off. I had to ask. And she was really struggling like the day that I got there, you know, like, am I dying? Am I dying? Am I dying? Uh, she was super anxious. And I felt like that was an opportunity for me to, you know, talk to her about it and be like, do you know where you're going? Do you know what it's going to be like? And all of this. And so um, when I asked her the question, uh, do you know where you're going? She said, no. All this time I had assumed, and it's a good thing I asked. And sometimes we have to be bold. And I want to challenge you to be bold in your relationships and conversations when you feel that nudge to ask a question like that um lean into it you know i i didn't want to offend my grandma but i also knew that having that conversation would help her move forward and feel better and so I had asked her that question. I was able to explain things to her more, um, help her pray uh, the prayer of salvation, read scripture to her um, before she died. And I mean, this is like two weeks before she died. Um, and so I was able to minister to her in a way that I would have, like, first of all, if you know me and have known me for a long time, uh, <laughs> the fact that I did this is like, whoa, who are you? Um, but 
God, but God, because I recognize now, um, at the end, like through all of this, that every intentional decision I have made to lean into the uncomfortable have those hard conversations, speak when I feel God telling me I need to use my voice, all of those things has led to knowing that I know that I know that I know that my grandma today is healed, whole, has her voice back, is probably doing a little twist and shout, um, and celebrating with Jesus today, okay? How cool is that? Every, like, I have been on this journey of being okay with being uncomfortable and challenging myself to do hard things since 2009. It didn't come overnight that I could get to this point. But every little decision, every tiny little baby step led me to where I am today. And I want to challenge you to be intentional. Lean in to the hard. I literally have a shirt that says, I can do hard things. Because some days I need reminded that I can do hard things. And it's not because I'm doing it in my strength. It's because I have to be fully reliant on God to get through it. Like, it's not my strength, it's his strength. Do you know, by the time that um, she died, not only was I putting lotion on her, but I was suctioning. I would have never, like, in fact, I threw up one time just, like, seeing it. The mucus coming out of her trach. Like, I threw up. <laughs> and by the end, like, I'm pretty sure I was the last to suction her. I was the last to talk to her. I was the one that mo I washed her face. I put all of her, like, skincare stuff on and put lotion on her whole body. And it was in putting lotion on her that I looked up and every once in a while, like her eyes would water. And when her eyes would water, I didn't know this was a sign. I had no idea of that. But um, I guess at the end, um, a lot of times there's a tear. And it's not... Like, there's a reason for it. It's not that she's crying. But every once in a while, like, you know, her eyes would water or whatever. And because she can't, like, if I'm not paying attention, I'm not going to hear her or know what's wrong. So I always, like, looked for that and I asked her three questions every single time. And the three questions, one, were, maybe four, are you okay, Grandma? Are you in pain? Are you sad? Do you need me to tell you a story? Because, you know, that is my personality. I use humor. And so I would always be like, do you need me to tell you a story? And so after I asked those questions, I always watch her face so I can see what her response is. Because while she couldn't, she can't talk like, you know, verbally like we do. I could still understand what she was saying. And um, it was in that moment um, that I looked up um, and I was watching her face to like get her response. And I realized that her breathing had gotten super shallow. And that was it. And I just think that, gosh, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that God gave me that time when I, um, some of you guys know that like in 2019, I think I was finally 2018, 2019, I was finally grieving the loss of my stepdad who died in September, September of 2015. Um, when he died, 
I like, I was the one that told a joke, but I couldn't even tell him how I felt because there were, there were so many walls up. And I remember thinking like, I can't tell him because I will bawl my eyes out. And I am not quite sure why I thought that wasn't okay. But I didn't think that it was okay to bawl my eyes out. I wanted to keep it in control, keep in control. And so when my stepdad died, I was able to write a letter and kind of put it all in words and give it to my mom and have her read it after I left. So I could still express my gratitude and appreciation for this man who helped raise me. And so for God to give me this opportunity with my grandma, where I could tell her everything. I was able to tell her how much I loved her, how much I was going to miss her. And also have the experience and memories that will last for the rest of my life. My sister and I, you know, they say like towards the end, there's a moment where like they like they have the rally where they're more awake. We weren't quite sure like that's what that was, but there was probably a day, two days before she died and she had her rally day or whatever and she was awake a lot that day and um her and I and my sister because it was just at that point pretty much me my sister and um my grandma um all I mean other people came and helped but it was mainly us and the majority of the time so um I like we would take turns because we knew it was the end like she told us like I'm tired of fighting I'm done and um that was something that like I had to have the guts to ask her so many times like you know acknowledging the elephant like she looked tired and I just needed I had to ask the question and so on Valentine's Day I asked her the question like grandma are you tired are you tired of fighting? Because it, it, it turned into a really rough day on, um, like towards the end of Valentine's day. Uh, sorry, my nose is running now. Um, <laughs> sitting in my car in Walmart, waiting on my sister to come out. Uh, my sister, Jessica, who I've also been trying to help. So, um, Anyways, we took turns and, you know, I had, you know, said, she had said, I am done. I'm no, I'm not fighting anymore. And in that, it just helped all of us. Have you ever felt, and I know you have, like something needs to be said, but it just is left unsaid. Say it. Say it. Ask the hard questions. Just ask the hard questions. So um, I had asked her that and at that point it was like, okay, she's done. She's tired of fighting. Um, I'm a little naive and don't know how all this works. I was like, okay, she's going to go tonight. Let's call everyone, have them come and say their goodbye. And so we have a long night of everyone telling her goodbye and, and um, spending that time with her. And then after that, um, I really was like, okay, she's going to be, you know, she's going to go tonight. Well, she didn't. She lasted like two more days. But um, I think it was the next day or the day after that um, my sister and I just sat with her holding her hand. I was on one side and my sister was on the other. And um, I would just tell her like, I love you so much. And I'm not crying uh, because I was crying. I didn't hold it back. I let it out. I didn't fight it. And I sobbed in front of my grandma. And I originally, I was like, I didn't want her to feel that. 
and be stressed over that. But what I told her was in it, like, I just let myself go. Like, I just surrendered and just sobbed by her side and told her, like, it wasn't that I didn't want her to go. It was just that I was going to miss her. And so at the end, because I was able to just release and just be in the moment, not worry about, like, keeping it together, um, I will never forget. I, would, I was hugging her and just sobbing, sobbing. Worse than this. I mean, the worst ugly cry because I don't cry pretty. And she just reached up and, you know, at this point, she's not leaving her bed. She just reached up with her arm and put it around me and just patted me very, like, lovingly. And it was a memory that I'll never forget. And all I can think is, if I wouldn't have done the hard things, had the hard conversations, and allowed myself that moment to surrender and fully be in the moment, I wouldn't have that. And so, it was just an amazing opportunity that God gave me to spend with her at the end. And to be with my sister, Christy, um, Jessica is the one that is here now. I have more than one sister. And so my sister, Jessica, is the one that's living in my town. And I'm trying to help her get back on her feet because she has all the mental health issues. So um, that's Jessica. Christy is the caregiver of the family who is the best caregiver. Like, she just has a gift. But... In that moment, I don't know if she would have done it um, if I wasn't there. But I know because I was there, I was able to see her do the same thing. Like, I let go and just sobbed. And she was able to do it too. And so she will always have that memory of my grandma patting her. And just saying, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And I'm just so thankful that I have those memories and I was able to do the hard things to be able to experience that. And God giving me that full circle moment of six months of asking God to help me be more gentle because I know I suck at it. To allow me to lovingly nurture my grandma and show her love probably in a way that she's never had. It's just a really cool, really cool moment. And so now you know why I've been avoiding recording this podcast and sharing this with you because it's just been a lot. Um, I'm trying to get back on track. I'm, I feel like I'm finally coming out of like just the numbness, um, of after, you know, um, she died on the 18th and then her funeral was like the following Friday. Um, I was able to do her makeup. If that isn't God, I don't know what is. Because I don't even normally visit. Like, I don't go to the front where the casket is. Like, I don't go up to the bodies. Ever. Um, and I did my grandma's makeup. And she looked so pretty. And she would be just, you know, like, that was just one more thing that I could do. Because she had a love for makeup. I have a love for makeup. And, um, she was just gorgeous, uh, laying there. Um, anyways, I'm off track, but anyways, I got home. I left the funeral, I think was on a 
Friday, Thursday and Friday, and then um, I came home on Sunday, and um, it's just been, you know, one thing after another, coming back, and also, like, lack of sleep, lack of uh, focus, and processing my emotions, I didn't want to just jump back in and pretend it didn't happen because it did and it's worthy of taking a moment and processing. And so um, there hasn't been a couple podcast episodes like I've missed a couple weeks and that of course is not my goal. My goal is to show up consistently on the podcast and inside the Real Talk Tribe community. Um, but if something has to go, it should be those two things over, you know, the bigger things, uh, my family and, uh, which I wouldn't say I'm necessarily doing a great job there, but I'm doing better than I could have been doing, um, my coaching clients, you know, I don't have almost a full schedule of coaching clients. So, um, I've really like focused on the, my coaching clients, uh, the breakthrough challenge. If you're in the breakthrough challenge, you know, like I'm still showing up for you. We had a group coaching on the 28th, um, which is my birthday. And, um, yesterday, today we have the success lounge group coaching at noon Eastern time. So I'm, I've still been showing up in those ways because, um, that matters and those are paying clients. But, um, at the end of the day, you have to look and be like, okay, if something has to go, what is it? And so, um, it was recording podcast epi episodes showing up here inside the Real Talk Tribe community, scheduling and posting on my business page and Instagram showing up in my stories. You know, those are things that I normally do. Um, but it was the experience and my grandma and what God has done was worthy of me taking that time. And he will honor it. He already has. So anyways, that's it. That's all I really wanted to tell you. Um, I didn't want to blow my nose where, you know, I'm trying to just like blot <laughs> until I get off this. Um, I'm trying to get back on track and I can't guarantee that it's going to be the way, you know, it's not going to, I can't guarantee it's going to be perfect. Um, but I know that I am closer to being back on track than I was last week. And that's all we can do, right? We do our best. We let God do the rest. And I hope that when you're listening to this or if you're listening live uh, or watching live on Facebook currently where I'm, you know, because I'm, I'm recording this for the podcast, but I'm also live inside the Real Talk Tribe community. I hope that you gain something from this episode beyond what I'm getting ready to say, but also I hope you can see me as an example of putting the first things first. The name of the podcast is Priorities on Purpose, and there's a reason for it. Because even though they are our priorities, it doesn't necessarily mean that we make the best decisions when it comes to those priorities. Because sometimes those priorities are, are safer, like they're safe. And so we neglect the main priorities for other things because they pay attention um, what was I saying? They give us more grace, right? You know, like we neglect our marriage. We neglect our kids because they know you're going through something. It's okay when they still should be the main priority. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, that's what this podcast is all about. And I think that 
uh, or I hope that I can be an example of living that out. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Also, shout out to those in Portugal because uh, I think I have been like since I went to Indiana for the last four weeks, I've been ranking in Portugal. So thank you, Portugal friends, for um, listening to the podcast. And uh, don't be shy. I would love to hear from you. Find me on Instagram. You can email me. All that information is in the show notes. Join the Real Talk Tribe community, uh, which is where I'm live at right now, because that is a community that is for you. All right. So I think that answers all of those questions. Thank you for giving me grace. Thank you for listening. And I just want to challenge you to do hard things so that you can continue moving forward and know what it's like to live in his strength versus just our strength. All right, that's it. Bye, guys.